What's up everybody? I just want to make this video about common gym myths that you hear all the time. Um, I wrote some footnotes over here just to go over them, um, but the first one that I hear a lot uh, when talking to people about weight loss, like, yeah man, you know, we're construction, I'm sweating all the time. Like, you always hear that, I sweat all the time. I wear, I wear a hoodie and I wear sweatpants in the gym when I go on the treadmill to sweat more, to lose more weight. Um, your water loss or when you sweat has nothing at all to do with fat loss. Just putting that out there. Yes, you will lose some water weight. That water weight's gonna be retained um, simply by eating foods high in sodium or just by drinking more water after you leave. So that's a very common myth. The only way to lose fat is having a caloric deficit throughout the week. That's how you lose fat. Moving on to the second one, carbs causing you to be fat. You hear that all the time. Yeah, I'm on this Atkins diet where I'm only eating meat and I'm cutting out all carbs. Um, I hate that so much because while I'm cutting weight, I'm, cons I'm consuming over 250, 300 grams of carbs daily. Um, I never cut carbs. Carbs are your body's main source of energy and they should be in every single nutrition program that you're following. If you have to stick to a nutrition program or if you're quote unquote dieting and you're cutting out carbs or you're lowering fat, um, then, you're, then you are indeed dieting. You should be following a program where you feel as if you aren't dieting, <laughs> which is the best quote unquote diet. Um, it's something that you can maintain for life and build a lifestyle around. At the end of the day, it's all about longevity. You wanna be able to do something that you can say, you know what, I could do this for life. So what's the point in getting fit and getting in shape and getting the dream body that you want and strive for if at the end of the day, it's only something that you can do for a short period of time before reverting back to your old ways and thus gaining the fat back again. If you think about it from a nutritional standpoint, fat has nine calories per gram. Carbs have four calories per gram. So if you look at the fat cell, it's literally twice as dense in calories as a gram of carbs. So just common sense, if you wanna lose a little bit of weight and you're not into tracking everything, just simply cut back on your cheeses and your greasy foods that are dense in the fat. You know, eat more whole foods, potatoes, lean sources like chicken, and you'll lose weight because they're simply less dense in calories. And you'll hear this all the time. People always think that they need to do cardio to lose weight. Like I said, at the end of the day, it only comes down to a calorie deficit. If you burn or exert more calories than your body intakes on a daily basis, you'll lose weight. It doesn't matter if you're doing exercise each day to create that calorie deficit or if you're just simply eating at a calorie deficit. Your body doesn't care. At the end of the day, it's a calorie deficit. Let's say hypothetically speaking, my body maintains itself at 3000 calories and I consume 3000 calories today and I do 500 calories worth of cardio and spend three hours of rigorous cardio at the gym to burn those 500 calories. If I do that every single day for a week, I'll burn around a pound of fat. Or I could just simply eat 2500 calories each day and burn the same pound of fat. Um, so it's work smarter, not harder, guys. All right, it, you don't have to do cardio to lose fat. And in the gym, I see this all the time. Always see these guys working till failure. And a lot of my friends, they do it too. They're always trying to exert themselves, push their body to its limit. Um, and they say it's because that's how you get stronger, that's how you get bigger, um, pushing your muscles until absolute failure. Granted, that is um, a very good way. It's called sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, which is only accounts for about 25 to 30% of your muscle's size, which should be included in any single kind of program or regimen that you're following um, because a lot of isolation movements like bicep curls or concentration curls are sarcoplasmic hypertrophy based. Um, essentially, it's short for pump training. When you're training for a good pump or that burn in your muscle and you're doing a lot of repetitions and very low weight, that's sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. Now, what accounts for the other about 70% of your muscle size and strength is gonna come from the myofibular hypertrophy, which is low rep range and high, high weight, 
or an increased amount of weight. And that's what you see a lot of athletes do. All right, it's all about explosive power. And that's why they're typically bigger guys, right? Because they're lifting a lot of weight for a very low rep range. Granted, you don't get that pump feeling where your muscles feel like really full of blood, um, but that's what forces them to grow when they feel like, wow, you know, this is a lot of weight. Your body always is trying to evolve and adapt to its environment. So if you're forcing your body to lift heavy weight, it's gonna need to grow to keep up with yourself, okay? So, so both forms of training should be included into your regimen. Now that's just one thing that I wanted to put out for you guys. Um, I hear it all the time. So remember, carbs are not bad. Sweating more doesn't mean you're losing more fat. Doing cardio isn't the only way to lose weight. Honestly, I didn't do any cardio to lose my 80 pounds of fat and transform my physique. I literally did no cardio. I tracked my macros and I hit the gym with both types of hypertrophy. So when it comes down to it, guys, um, you know, avoid all the supplements and all the media buzz out there that's uh, you know throwing you guys off track. It really comes down to the basics. Eat clean, train dirty, and you'll see the results.